Let there be more and richer colors in people's lives. Japan's sole comprehensive supplier of paints and surface treatment agents, the Nippon Paint Holdings Group has led the paint industry in Japan for more than 130 years. Guided by a proud legacy and technological prowess developed throughout the years and driven by insatiable curiosity, we have reinvented our business time and again and challenged ourselves to develop and distribute quality products in prompt response to the needs of the time. We revised our management philosophy in 2018. Let us take you back to our proud history, which you will find is closely connected to the founding spirit that we have cherished. Around the Meiji Restoration, waves of Western civilization arrived in Japan after the long period of national isolation. The founder of the Nippon Paint Holdings Group, a gentleman by the name of Jujiro Moteki, studied diligently at Keio Gijuku Public School and then Kaisei School, which later gave birth to the University of Tokyo, and grew interested in chemicals such as pigments and paints. This interest stemmed from the strong influence of his elder brother Haruta, who translated Western books on chemistry as a side job to his profession as an English teacher. One day, someone visited Haruta to ask if they could produce non-toxic white powder in Japan. At the time, white makeup powder contained lead, and many people suffered from lead poisoning. Knowing that white makeup powder in Western countries used non-toxic zinc oxide, Haruta sought consultation from Jujiro about production of zinc oxide. Out of the sincere wish to help those who suffered from lead poisoning, Jujiro plunged into the purification of the chemical. However, zinc oxide production turned out to be extremely difficult as he literally had to start from scratch. After countless failed attempts, he finally succeeded in producing zinc oxide in 1879 for the first time in Japan. He was also granted a license to use his zinc oxide to manufacture drugs for burns and heat rash, in addition to non-toxic white makeup powder. His hard work seemed to have finally paid off, but zinc oxide production was very costly because of R&D and capital expenditures. Furthermore, its demand was limited as they could only market it for medical use. While he was searching for a way out of this predicament, all of a sudden, a tipping point arrived. At the time, the Finance Ministry's Printing Bureau was looking for a supplier of zinc oxide, which would be needed into vermilion ink pads. The Printing Bureau even attempted to manufacture zinc oxide on their own, but had to give up as they could not achieve a satisfactory quality. So they decided to purchase from Jujiro, who had successfully manufactured zinc oxide of high purity. This bulk demand helped to stabilize his business, allowing Jujiro to commence work on his long-cherished desire to research and develop Western-style paints. It was the age of civilization and enlightenment in Japan, and buildings and vessels were being built throughout the country, and demand for paints was rising. Yet, it took advanced knowledge and technology to develop paints. As a result, numerous dishonest merchants made huge profits by diluting and repackaging imported paints. I want to make paints that are of comparable quality to Western ones. Determined, he devoted himself to his research. Jujiro was committed to develop paints by himself rather than reselling imported paints. After repeated trial and error, he became the first in Japan to develop paints in 1880. The news spread immediately, and he exhibited his paints and zinc oxide at the Second National Industrial Exhibition. His commendation there led him to an unexpected twist of fate. The coding manager of the Japanese Navy, by the name of Heikichi Nakagawa, invited him to jointly set up a paint manufacturing business. Nakagawa wanted him to develop 
made in Japan marine paints for practical application. And Jujiro decided to throw his heart and soul into doing just that. With Nakagawa's support, Komiosha Company was founded in 1881. This marked the beginning of the Nippon Paint Holdings Group. In order to meet the growing demand for warship paints, as well as an increase in demand for paints for Western-style private houses and buildings that was triggered by the construction of the Imperial Palace, he expanded the product line, thus stabilizing the business of the newly founded company. In an effort to further expand business and ramp up capacity, Jujiro invited investors and became acquainted with a gentleman named Hatsutaro Tasaka. With a fresh investment in hand, in 1896, Jujiro built a state-of-the-art factory in Shinagawa, Tokyo, which boasted the largest production capacity in Japan. He also succeeded in developing a technique to purify what was already the world's most pure zinc oxide, for which he was granted a patent in 1897. In the following year of 1898, he invited a number of shareholders to incorporate his business to establish Nippon Paint Manufacturing Company Limited. Tasaka became the first president of the company. Meanwhile, demand for paints continued to surge as one new industry after another arose, such as private railways, shipbuilding, and maritime transport. In response, a new factory was built in Osaka in 1905. At the time, they still had to rely on imports of ship bottom paints, which required special properties such as anti-fouling, anti-rust, and water resistance. However, many years of R&D efforts finally resulted in the development of original ship bottom paints. This led to a subsequent release of a string of new products. With his insatiable curiosity, Jujiro shaped the future and had the faith to overcome numerous difficulties, thus establishing domestic technology for paint manufacturing. After the end of World War I in 1920, the storm of financial depression ravaged the country. Nippon paint manufacturing was no exception to this and had to report the first deficit after its foundation. Jujiro's expansion policy backfired and the company faced its greatest predicament yet. Against this backdrop, entered Genosuke Obata, who was entrusted with leading the company as it was on the verge of bankruptcy. Obata lost no time implementing a major reform program. He divested the coating division, zinc oxide purification business, and iron oxide factory, to name but a few, to focus on production of pigments and paints in Tokyo and Osaka. To change perspectives, he relocated the head office to Osaka. The reform was a drastic one, including downsizing of labor. But the remaining employees united to achieve a rapid recovery. What made this possible was Obata's long-held belief. A business is the people that comprise it. Without stabilizing our employees' feelings and regaining solidarity within the company, we will never get over this crisis. The conflict between capitalists who pretend to be feudalistic masters and workers who are affected by labor movements and only claim their rights is hindering Japan's economic development. Concerned over this trend, Obata advocated mutual prosperity, where the two parties would agree to align their rights and obligations to achieve prosperity based on mutual respect. Acting upon his belief, he decided to disclose profit and loss information, including profit appropriation and executives remunerations in a bid to get rid of suspicions held by some employees. He thus ensured that employees who stayed with the company were satisfied with their own decision and declared that he would share the joys and sorrows and interests as one of them. In addition, in a daring attempt to move past the then prevalent feudalistic culture in Japanese society, he abolished privileges for executives and treated employees as equal partners. This helped to solidify the unity within the company 
and everyone attended to his or her own duties. This policy of his went beyond the company. The company does not have any conflict of interest with distributors. Rather, they are an extension of the company and fellow workers with whom we walk hand in hand, declared Obata. Under this policy, he shared some of the corporate information with the distributors and treated them with respect as professionals of knowing what to supply to whom. This consolidated the sense of unity between the company and distributors, and it aligned their goals of expanding the performances of their businesses. Obata's goal was to increase transparency of the company's management and work together with employees, business partners, and distributors on an equal footing so that they could join together to strive for mutual prosperity. Under Obata's leadership, the company's performance began to recover steadily. As soon as performance stabilized, the Keihin district was reduced to ashes in the Great Kanto Earthquake. Immediately, Obata sent some employees to the affected areas to distribute cash to the distributors and business partners there. Daikoku Kai, an association of the distributors in Western Japan, preferentially supplied paints to their Eastern Japan counterpart, Ebisukai, to support an early reconstruction of their business. Thanks to such proactive support programs, the distributors and business partners in the affected areas were able to resume business within a month. With the subsequent demand stemming from reconstruction, the company and its partners were able to expand their business, having barely missed a beat. Time passed by, and after the end of World War II, people's perceptions of paints changed dramatically in Japan. No imported passenger cars were painted black, but instead were adorned with richly colored paints of green, gray, or blue. Colors can draw people's attention to enhance traffic safety and general security. People can relax in a car painted in their favorite colors or choose colors that match with the surrounding environment. Paints are now widely recognized as something that adds colors, comfort, and peace of mind to our lifestyles. Brighten the world with paints. The Nippon Paint Holdings Group remains committed to providing people's lifestyles with colors, comfort, and peace of mind by continuing to enhance the quality of its paints and coating technology. We pioneered in the move to spread our advanced technology and quality meticulously cultivated in Japan to the coating industry of the world. The group established a partnership with the Utalam Group founded by Mr. Go Chen Liang. It began with the establishment of Nippon Paint Singapore's predecessor, Pan Pacific Malaysia Industry, in Singapore in 1962. Since then, we have branched out to Malaysia, Thailand, Hong Kong, and other countries and established our position as the top brand in Asia, building close relationships for more than 50 years. The group has also made inroads into the Americas and Europe. With their insatiable curiosity, Jujiro Moteki and Genosuke Obata built the foundations of the Nippon Paint Holdings Group. The Nippon Paint Holdings Group made its humble beginning out of the sincere wish to deliver comfort and safety to the lives of people who were suffering from lead poisoning. By adding colors to the townscape and things that people use, we soothe, excite, and encourage people's minds. We will remain committed to bringing colors and joy to everyday life, a mission that only we can fulfill as we continue enhancing our paints and coding technology.